So this video is a bit of an update on the back 855 and 800 mounting hardware that I've been making. But mostly it's a massive, massive thank you to the people that have bought my stuff so far. I've been able to use the funding to push forward some of the projects that I have on the go, and I'll talk more about this later on. It's a huge buzz to see people installing something that I made onto their e-bike. Right now, I'm just doing the back 855 and 800 mounts, but I'm also working on a system for the back 2000 and the other larger controllers. This 855 mount comes in several styles to fit the different mounting points on the bike. This one in particular is shaped to fit the down tube of a bike, providing a short wiring run to the motor as well. The bolt holes on the side of the mount line up perfectly with the controller and accept two M5 bolts which are supplied. The cover plate attaches with two more bolts which I'm also supplying and for the first little while as a token of my appreciation I'm engraving a name or a logo into the face plate. These are a few examples of what people have requested and you can have pretty much what you want. The channels cut into the mount are for the two zip ties which secure the assembly to the frame. I've aimed to provide as secure as possible mounting surface, as well as expose as much of the controller's heat sinking to the air for cooling purposes. The shaping on the back portion serves two purposes. One is to form a drip edge to divert water away from the wiring, and the other is to allow the use of a zip tie if you want to secure further waterproofing material that is flexible that you could use to, to tie around the wires and secure it further. When I install my back controllers, I use a clear silicone sealant and I make a small bead all around the contact surfaces with the controller. The surfaces of the mount have been designed to allow for silicone so it can seal up the back where the fins of the heatsink end and around the side where you have the heat sinking. If you think this is all going a bit overboard, have a look at the water damage on this CYC harness connector. This area is the only real vulnerability with the 855 and the connectors are difficult to heat shrink to a 100% waterproof state. I've ridden all through winter in wind, rain and slush with this combination and I've had no electrical issues at all with my controllers. You could take the extra step to use silicone in the back part if you think water may spray in still, but I've found the drip edge to be adequate so far. As well as the down tube version, there's also a seat tube version and you can see it here on Harvey's ride. I also do a flat back version but really, if you order one, I'll shape the base to fit best your bike. And if you need really extensive modification, there might be a small additional charge. Uh, I also make the 855 for the CYC X1 system, and it fits in between the motor mounting arms for people that use the motor underneath the bottom tube. This one in Galaxy Black is actually for Max in Switzerland who is a critical part of the Discord community server and a really good friend. Actually, I also made him this gold version as well as an extra thank you. And in reality, I can't thank Max and people like Greg, Matthew and Daryl and many, many more enough for all the support on the Discord group for what I do either financially or simply words of encouragement and ideas and suggestions. I'm pretty hard on myself sometimes and I have to remember to take a step back and look at what has been achieved. Captain Codswallop has stopped being just my thing and it's really become a community where there are some really amazing characters and people can hang out and make e-bikes. It's not an exclusive group either and you're most welcome to sign on on Discord and join in. According to Max, it's not that straightforward so I'm going to do a video on how to set up Discord at some point separately. I said at the start that the funding that I raised from selling mounts and through my Patreon support will go on e-bike projects, so this is a little bit of an update on those. The lights project I had going on is intended to provide a path to road legality by giving an easy to mount system for headlights, turn signals, and braking, emergency lighting, etc. I learned quite a lot from the rather crude earlier version that I did. These things here are called NeoPixel rings and I can actually individually target each of the LEDs in this ring. Um, I think this one's 12, I think this is 16 LEDs here, but these can be all the colors of the rainbow. And what I'm going to do is use these for the brake and turn signal lighting. The main beam, I've picked up some of these, I think they're actually going to be fog lights for Jeeps, but they've got some really good range on them and they run between 
9 and 36 volts so I can pretty much run them with a 12 or a 24 volt battery if I want to. So I'm looking at doing two systems. One of these is going to be standalone so that anybody, even on like a push bike or a gas bike if they wanted, could install it and use it. And the second will be integrated with the NXT system, which will allow a much greater control of the lighting and the kind of patterns that you can put on the lights for different scenarios. This little guy here is a tiny, tiny logic board, and that's going to be running all the commands to do the braking and the turn signals based on inputs that will be soldered onto this little board here. In fact, actually thinking about it, I'm pretty sure that I can rig these things here to flash red and blue. And really, what better way to clear people out of your way than pretending to be a traffic cop? Actually, I think that might be illegal. And obviously, as such, I cannot recommend that course of action. The project I think that is most anticipated, though, is the lightning rods motor build. It will be using the vector frame and I'm currently awaiting its arrival. It's going to be quite a big jump for me in both power and size, and this is going to be the build that's taking shape over the winter. What I'm aiming for is a bike that can be built by anyone, that has the power of the ASI modified Sir Ron, but for a better price, and that doesn't require you to buy a stock bike and then pretty much replace everything apart from the frame and motor. I know a fair few people with 72 volt Surons and they are well over 7k into those machines by the time it's all said and done. I think a bespoke build has every chance of matching it performance wise for less money even before factoring in the cost of production level manufacturing. Bold words right? Well I guess it's time to prove it. So that's the plan over the winter to get stuck into these projects and hopefully get shredding tarmac by early summer. Thank you for supporting the channel and thank you from the bottom of my heart to all the awesome people on Discord who've kept me going over some pretty bleak times this year. Cheers to everybody.